All right, no bullshit here. You are clearly going to learn how to create API server, how to test APIs with the help of Swagger. I'm going to do all of it with the help of ChatGPT or AI, which you should already be using as well. This video will be helpful for QA engineers, software engineers, software developers, as that, whatever you call yourself. The main idea is, if you're working with API, this video will be hyper helpful for you if you are from junior up to the beginner of the senior level. Cool, since I already got your attention, let me introduce myself within 20 seconds before we get into the, all of this technical stuff which you are about to learn. And by the way, while I'm going to be introducing myself, you feel free to hit that like button below to subscribe to our channel and also make sure to hit that share button below this video because I promise you, you're gonna love it so much that you are going to share it with your friends afterwards. All right, my name is Sergey Kromchenko. I am a founder of Cognify QA Bootcamp, which helps people like you to become a software QA engineers or QA automation engineers from scratch or to improve your existing skills. But today we're even going to help some of the software developers or those who are planning to become one to learn how to create API servers and how to set Swagger for it. And also, how to test APIs through Swagger because all of you developers, you gotta know how to test APIs. So we, QA engineers, wouldn't have to find all of the bugs in the world. So you could find some as well. All right, now let's get started. All right, let's rock it. First of all, I want you guys to open up your browser, go to google.com and type ChatGPT and open up a first link, which is chat.openai.com. And you have to register a new account if you don't have one, and you'll have to log in. At this moment of recording this video, I'm utilizing ChatGPT4, which is a paid version. There was a free version, which is 3.5. You can use that. That will give you very similar results. But since I already have a paid version, and at this time, I'm paying 20 bucks per month, I will use that for the benefit. Cool. With the help of ChatGPT, we're going to create an API server and set up Swagger. And then I'll show you how to test it. So let's kick it off step by step. And by the way, no worries. I'm going to walk you step by step and show you how everything is done. And I will explain the code to you. Cool. Now let's chat, ask ChatGPT. How do you create an API server in Node.js and have and set up Swagger in it? Please share the code with explanation. So we're, we're asking, as you can see, we're asking ChatGPT to create us a server and set up Swagger for it and also explain it. So let's see what we're gonna get in response. Below is a simplified guide to get you started. First of all, initialize the project. Okay, while we are getting all these instructions, I'm, I'm going to ask you guys to kick off your, not a browser, but kick off your ID of your preference. In my case, it is VS Code, and in a few words, Visual Studio Code or VS Code is the place where you can write the code. It's a code editor or integrated development environment, the place where we can write a lot of code. So, or create any programs, automate them, etc. If you are not technical, if you have not done it before, please navigate to google.com and type in VS Code and get to the download page and download it either for Windows or for Mac. And after you set it up, you will have something like this. And from here, I'm going to instruct you. Cool, let's continue. So by the way, I've opened a terminal by uh, clicking terminal and a new terminal on the top of the screen, or you can do it with the help of the shortcut. Either way you do it, first of all, I'm going to take a look at where am I and I'm going to create a new folder. So, and I will do it on a desktop. So I'm going to navigate to the desktop and I think I have a, I have a project, whatever. Let me clear it. I'm going to create a new folder, make there on Mac and I'm going to call it, let's see, API dash server actually api underscore server and now i'm going to open up this folder and for those who are not familiar with a terminal commands feel free to just google them but what i did i've created a new folder by the way you can do it with your ui with the help of finder okay 
I've created the API, API server folder and I've opened it up. Now, let me quickly open it um, in the UI so you guys could all see it. I'm gonna go to, I believe that was desktop, API server, perfect. I'm going to open it up, cool. I'm going to close it and I'm going to press function option tilde or that's not it. What is it? Control function control tilde. Yeah, there we go. Function control tilde on a Mac. On a Windows, it will be something else, but whenever you click terminal, you will see a shortcut right here. Cool. Now we can get back since our ID is already set up and we can start creating a server. Let's get back to the browser and see what we have received so far. So, first of all, we have to initialize a new project. When you're working with the Node.js or with the JavaScript, you have to create a new project, pretty much initialize it. And npm init is the command that will do it. And dash y means that we are agreeing with all the questions that we will get when we run npm init. And you can do it on your own. You can just run npm init and then it will ask you a lot of questions and you can just keep hitting enter so you could get the default value. Or you could simply add dash y and it will do it automatically for you. And as you can see, it created package.json and also ChatGPT did specify it to us. Awesome. Step number two, install all dependencies. Whenever we are working with a JavaScript, we have to install quite a few libraries that will help us to do multiple things. And I will explain it to you quickly. Express is a framework that helps us, that helps us to let me see it. That helps us to actually run the backend, run the API server, and you will see it in a moment. Swagger UI Express will help us to build the UI for the Swagger. And the YAML JS will help us to work, with, I guess, with a YAML in JavaScript. YAML is the file format and JavaScript is the programming language. So I assume this one will be needed in order to work with YAML in some interesting way. Cool, then we have to create actual server. So create a file name called server.js and then I'm going to copy this code. So I'm gonna navigate here, touch server.js and I gotta hit enter. And you'll see the file popping up right here. Cool, I'm going to paste the code that I've just copied and let's scroll down. Step four, set up Swagger documentation. Okay, so we are going to copy this code and we're going to create a Swagger file called swagger.yaml. Once again, YAML is just a file format. So touch on a Mac, on Windows will be something else. Swagger.yaml. Cool, and now I'm going to click here, Command V to paste the code. Okay, I'm gonna go back and I'm going to scroll down. Update your server JS to serve Swagger documentation using Swagger UI Express. Okay, are they saying I should completely update the file? Why should I have created it at the beginning? Update your server JS. Okay, well, I guess ChatGPT is not that smart, or maybe I'm missing something. Let's update it. I guess that was the first version right here where we did not have the Swagger and now we did add Swagger. So if you would like to, you could go through and see the differences. You could see that there is no Swagger UI uh, imported at all. And then here we have a Swagger UI imported from the library. And then we have, uh, let's see, we require YAML.js, we load YAML, we read it with the help of the YAML library. And then we run it on the server uh, on the port 3000. Okay, let's finish going through, let's finish going through this instruction and then I will explain you the code, okay? This code sets up an endpoint API docs, okay? So pretty much we're done. We're done running, we're done creating everything. Now we can simply run this command. We, we can just click here, copy or triple click here to select entire line, command C and get back here and run command V and let's make an attempt to run it. Cool, and you guys might not get this problem. I know what it is, because somewhere else I'm running, I'm already running another server on my local, on the port 3000, so I'm going to make a change. If you do not see this error message, you do not have to change it. 
but I will change the server to 3000. Let's see. Oh, we do not specify the port here. Okay, cool. So it's only one place. Awesome. Okay, let's run it. Now let's run our code again. No server JS. So we're pretty much saying, hey, no JS or JavaScript. Can you please run server JS file? And when we run it, here's what happens. Computer first reads all of the requires uh, or all of the imports. Then uh, we are specifying, let's see, the app will, uh, will be Express.js, uh, will be Express, which is the backend server software. Then the port will be 1000 and that's where we're running it. And by the way, for new people, localhost is pretty much our base website and the port is just like a door. Hey, on this website, which is my computer, we have a door number 1000 and that's where we are running our server. And then we're saying app use API docs, which is our path to the, to the swagger. I will show it to you in a moment if you are lost here. Then we're saying, hey, uh, we're using Swagger and pretty much we're setting up Swagger to this path right here. And I will do it right after I explain this piece of the code. Then we're saying, hey, there will be one API request and this, this one will be send, this one will be get request and it will be not the default, but the base URL. So. All of this plus slash will get us hello world. So let's check it. And by the way, this is just the beginning. We're gonna make it much more complicated. So on my Mac, I'm going to press command and just click it and it will automatically send it to the, uh, to the base URL of the API server. And we can see hello world here. It is the very base. We're going to improve it quite a lot in a second. Cool, now app is listening. And we're just specifying whatever is going to be our output whenever we're listening, whenever the server is running. And this output is right here. And we are interpolating our, uh, our text here with the base URL plus the port number. Cool. Now I'm going to show you how does the swagger look like. So let's click here. Uh, let's press command, click here again, or just right click, copy and paste in a browser. And at the end here, we gotta add slash API docs. I'm going to hit enter. Cool, now you can see the very basic of the swagger. By the way, we're just creating it. We're going to be testing it in a few minutes. I think you forgot to hit that like button below and to subscribe to our channel. Please make sure to do so, so you could give me some energy back because I'm giving you such a useful content, right? And if you do think that it is useful, make sure to leave a comment below and thank me for it. By the way, if you guys are interested in learning more APIs or if you are interested in becoming a QA engineer or a QA automation engineer, feel free to check out the links that I have for our courses that you can find right below this video. All right, let's continue. And in this Swagger documentation, we are going to be able to test it and to see the documented version. So for developers, it is amazing because they can keep the documentation of all the APIs. For now, we have only one that gets uh, returns greeting, which is kind of the dummy, but I will show it to you a much more expanded version in a second. So usually it looks like this. You expand it, you see that we have a get request and now we, we wanna try it out. So we have a button here, try it out. And since it is a GET request, we cannot, cannot pass any data or any parameters. So we can simply execute it. And this is an example value in response. So we're going to send request. And now after we have sent it, you can see the response. So our request was as following. And by the way, you can copy it and paste it in the terminal as it is a curl which is an API client, the requested URL and the response body and also response headers. So this, and also you can see the response code uh, 200, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is very useful for the very beginners, but now we're going to improve it a little bit before we proceed with more in-depth testing, okay? Cool, now let's ask ChatGPT if the ChatGPT can create, uh, can add all of, the, uh, all of the most popular API requests. Can you add crude to this API server and swagger? 
And by crude, I mean create, read, update, and delete. And in the world of API, that means create, which is post, read, which is get, you, uh, you which is update, I'm sorry, uh, update, which is put, and also, what else we got here? Uh, D is delete, which is delete. Great, let's take a look what does ChatGPT tells us. Step one, extend server.js for crude. Pretty much we can just copy it and you can see that it's now we're gonna have multiple. Uh, we're gonna have a few new things and I will explain it to you guys in a moment. Since this one is ready to go, I'm going to copy it. With the command tab, I'm switching back to another window and I'm going to replace all of this code with a lot of the code. Cool, let's come back. This file is not done yet. Let's give another moment to ChatGPT to finish our Swagger YAML file, which I will show you in a moment. And just FYI, that one is purely for, uh, for the Swagger. In order to create Swagger, you simply have to create a Swagger YAML file. Awesome, it is a good time to copy it and replace our previous one. Boom. Now we have 90 lines of code, which is amazing. I'm going to scroll down and see if we need to do anything else. Great, nothing else is needed. We just have to restart our server. I'm going to press here and press Control C, arrow up on your keyboard and return. Awesome, I've got the same error. You guys will not have it one more time. I have to update my server to be something else instead of 3000. Let me just do 333 instead. And let me make sure that we don't have another, uh, we don't specify it anywhere in the Swagger. Let me just uh, Command F, 3000, not here, amazing. Cool, that means we're good. All right, let's, let's start the server. Arrow up, run it again, amazing. Localhost, 3333. I'm going to, this time I'm going just to just highlight it, copy it, switch back to the browser, and navigate to, actually, I'm just going to update this one to 3333 three, 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 because I'm running a different, uh, different port number. And one more time, I'm just doing it so you guys could see that that is just a door that you are choosing on your own. And whoa, look at this. We've got three, actually four APIs now. Get, post, put, delete, which is create, read, update, and delete. Alrighty, now we're back here. So let me read the code to you again. First of all, we're importing all of the libraries. Uh, second of all, we are uh, we're specifying the, um, the app that we're going to be using. We're specifying the port. Middleware to parse JSON bodies. Okay, we are parsing JSON, which is a response we're going to be, uh, which is pretty much the response is coming in JSON format and we're gonna have to parse it. And the next, we are creating a database. For now, it is going to be in the, in the code only. That is not going to be something that we can see. It's only going to be saved in an array. For non-technical people, if you can ignore it, it's, it's just going to be saved in a database that we created right here. For more technical, it's just an array of, object, uh, of objects, which is a very simple version of a database that we can use in our code. Okay, crude. First one, get. We are getting our base URL right here, localhost 3333 slash items. That's our get request. And we're gonna be uh, getting response. We're going to, yeah, after we get response, we're just gonna, we're just gonna parse it. That's it. Post items, same URL. Uh, it's going to be exactly the same URL. So this base plus slash items and we're going to be passing an ID and a name. And then we're going to be adding those, these items to array items right here in a form of object as we have specified. And then we're gonna verify the result. Actually, we're not going to verify, we're just going to send result uh, to a one. Cool, the next one is a little bit different, put or update in this URL, so base right here, slash item slash id so slash id is a parameter and that will come from here uh let's see I id right there yep so we're going to be updating one of the items by specifying an id and 
aside of the rest of the code, I'm going to show it to you right now so you guys could match what you have in the UI to whatever you have on your API server. Okay, now is the actual testing part. So welcome to API testing with Swagger. So we have four calls, get, post, put and delete. First one we've already seen, but let's run it just in case one more time. So I'm going to click try it. So we could see, number one, we're gonna see execute button here. So this button, will, whenever we click it, it's going to send the API request. Number two, this section is for the response. So here we see an example value, but when we send it, we're gonna see actual value. And, and this, this is an example of the response. Let's send it. Cool, we have just sent it. First of all, we see what we have sent. We've sent this request, by the way, with the help of curl, which one more time you can copy and you can paste it in your terminal, which I will do in just right now. I will paste it in my terminal and I will hit run button and you will see same response right here in the terminal. That's just for you to know that curl API client from, from the Swagger, you can copy commands and run them in a terminal. Cool, then we can see URL right here, separately aside of seeing it in the same curl request. And, and mainly, the server response. We've got 200 status code, so we have to test it and make sure it is what it was expected. Number two, we've got our response body, and we need to verify that it is in the format that we were supposed to receive and usually you guys will get it in the form of ticket or developers will tell you what you need to verify or the, uh, some of the requirements that your team will provide will tell you that. And we've got our array of objects. At the moment it is one, but we're going to verify it soon that we're gonna have more. Response headers, there we go. So all of them are there and usually you will have your requirements specifying what headers should be there and which ones are required. At this moment, that should, we, should be it. The rest is just an example as you have seen before. Cool, so this was all about get request. Now let's get into the fun part, post API request. So one more time, after the base, we're gonna, we're gonna uh, append slash items, which is our path. And then we are, we're not seeing any parameters yet, but as soon as we click try it out, we should see parameters, there we go. And name, example item, let's call it item is, name actually is Sergi. So we're creating a new item and looks like this API server is creating some items, saving some items and, and removing some items. And we're completely fine with that. So let's update our request body and send the name Sergi. Cool, we've sent it, let's scroll down. Here's our curl request and you can see all of the headers, by the way, minus X means post, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, then we have URL and then we have minus H, which is the header and then minus D, which means body right here. That's for you just to know if you're not familiar with the curl. But regardless, that is not needed to be tested. Also, you can see the U request URL and finally response body. The ID is unique and I'll show you how we can use it in the future. The name is what I have requested in the body right here. So now we know that we've sent this, uh, this body in request and we got it in response plus we got an ID which is required since I do know that we have to get it based on a code that we have written. and. Let's see, we got headers here and we got 201. As you all know, 201 is created. Okay, I'm gonna move forward. This is the fun part. This is the first part of the fun part. Now, for developers and also for QAs, whenever you create something, you have to also get it. After you post it, you have to send a get request and make sure you got it. So I hit execute and now I see two items, the name one and name uh, Sergi. ID one, ID two, cool. But that's not exactly what you want. It's great that we can get all items and see it on the list, but the best test for it is actual uh, get, hold on, we don't have that one here. So we don't have get by ID. We only have update by ID. So this one should be okay for now. But usually you will have another get request, which would be just like this one, where you specify item slash ID, so it could get you, it could return you only one item. For now, we're getting many and we're fine with that for 
an example. Great, now let's move to put and update our ID or update our item. Let's click try it out. And we have to specify an ID of the item we want to update. So the first one was some dumb one, remember? It was like test item or something, item one. I want to update that. I'm going to click here. So I've changed it to one. I'm going to update an item with the name with the ID one and the name is going to be updated item name name and I'm fine with that. Cool. Let's send it execute. Let's send a request and execute it. So curl body, URL, response body. An item with an ID one is now containing the name updated item name, which used to be different. Let me come back to get items. It's still saved here as item one. Now I'm going back to put or update and response is updated item, which means after also developers and QAs, if you or everyone else, whenever you update data through pull request, you have to go back to get request by ID. In our case, it's just get all items, which is fine. And you have to verify that after you get it, that name is different now because there might be a bug. You might get a response that it was updated, but when you actually get it by ID or you just get all items, you will see that it was not. Great. We did test items. We did, uh, we did test get. We did test post. We did test put. Now let's test delete. So delete will also accept one parameter. And this is also an ID. So let's try it out. Okay, let's click try. Let's remove item with ID one and let's get and let's get it executed. Awesome, we've sent it and we've got 204. Ooh, no content. Usually, actually I have rarely seen 204. Usually people just specify 200, but in our code, we have probably specified 204 right here. Great job, chat GPT. Thank you for following the rules. And now, after we have removed, can you guys, what we got to do? You know what's up. We have to send the request again. So I'm going to click execute. And now we have only one, one item and that one with ID two, because we removed ID one, right? Easy peasy. So ID one was, was already removed. And now if I try to remove ID two, I also get 204, so now I should get back to execute, uh, to get request, send it, verify it. Awesome, we have an empty array, which means we do not have any, uh, any items at all. Which means we did remove all of, the, uh, all of the items that we have created. Amazing, that means that we've tested all of the APIs. The only one thing here that we have not tested at this moment is actual authorization. And this will be out of scope of this video. If you guys are interested to learn more about how to test Swagger with authorization or how to add it in a form of code, feel free to leave a comment below this video. And meanwhile, I'm going to get back to the code and explain it for you guys. So we've finished on, let's see, We've gone through get request, we've gone through post request. As soon as we would receive request, we would send this response in a body. And we would do ID and then we would take a link. Pretty much we would take how many items we already have in our database. We would just plus one to that ID and we would, same, we would send same body that we have received from the request. And then we're gonna, number one, we go, before we send it, we add it to our database right here. And then we will send it to, uh, to the app as a response. Then put, we're gonna do the same thing, uh, but we're gonna find that item by the, uh, by the ID that we have, by the ID that is specified right here as the parameter. So we grab it and then we parse it. And then if item, does not exist, exclamation mark means doesn't. So it does not exist, we're gonna return 404 item not found. By the way, I have missed that test case. Let's get back and test it. That's actually a really good case because we've only tested positive cases. Now let's test the negative case. So if I'm going to send this one now, no, let's say no items exist in a page as you can see, 
the body is empty. So I'm going to send a put request and response should be 404, undocumented, perfect, or not found, item not found. So that means our code works as expected right here. Next, we're going to, let's see, grab the body from the request, from the request body and assign it to the response body name. And we're gonna send it back. And delete is the same thing. We're gonna filter out, uh, or pretty much, we're, yeah, we're going to filter our ID. We're going to also parse it. And afterwards, we're going to filter out our ID. And a filter will do a very similar thing. It will just filter out the ID from the database, and then it will send 204, which means that it is gone now. And then one more time, as I've said before, we are saying that our app is using Swagger and it will be available by this, uh, by this path. So pretty much base URL plus slash API docs. And whenever we're, uh, we're running our server, it will specify this message right here. Awesome. And now Swagger YAML. So this is a bit more technical, but in a short, in a few words, Swagger is a structured file that, that gives pretty much, it is an instruction file that explains to our application or specifically to our Swagger UI library, what exactly it is going to include. And as you can see, we have a different items. And this items has a line right here, which goes all the way down. And this line will include number one, get, number two, post, number three, put, and number four, delete. And uh, put and delete, you can see they, they are in a different section, which is items, slash items, slash ID. And if you remember that that's exactly what we have right here, put, and delete, they have a little bit different URLs or paths, item slash ID instead of, instead of just items. Uh, and the rest, then inside we specify put, then under put we specify summary by utilizing indentation. If you guys want to learn more about YAML, about API testing, or even creating APIs, feel free to check out links that I'm going to leave right below this video. I'm pretty sure you guys are amazed with the amount of knowledge that you got. And I do want to encourage you to, number one, hit the like button, number two, leave a comment below, number three, subscribe to our channel and the main one click the share button and send it to your friends this will help the most to this video to become one of the most popular ones on youtube thank you for your time and i'll see you next time